Please join me in welcoming Deborah Hirschman. Thank you and good morning. I have to say this morning was so impressive. It felt like a little bit like the opening ceremonies at the Olympics to watch all those lovely ladies walk across the stage with their flags. And Peggy, you're right. Aviation um, is indeed a small world. Um, but its power to serve humanity is immense. Recently, we saw this in Haiti. Within hours of the devastating earthquake, airplanes were bringing in hundreds of volunteers, equipment, and essential supplies to assist in the recovery. Being part of a cause greater than yourself manifests itself in traumatic events like this earthquake. And how we respond says so much about us individually and collectively. Throughout history, women have never hesitated to respond. A good example of this was during World War II, when they were called to fill positions that were vacated by men serving in the armed forces. Ironically, during this period, while the government was actively promoting the concept of Rosie the Riveter, society still viewed women in the workplace as operating in a man's world, and they were a liability that needed special handling. I'd like to share with you some excerpts from an article entitled The 1943 Guide to Hiring Women, and this appeared in that same year's issue of Mass Transportation. The tips capture society's misguided view at that time of how to get the most efficiency out of women employees. If you can pick them, get young married women. They're less likely to be flirtatious than their sisters. They still have the pep and interest to work hard and deal with the public efficiently. And for some of you more experienced ladies out there, you might appreciate this. Older women are inclined to be cantankerous and fussy. <laughs> it's always well to impress upon older women the, the importance of friendliness and courtesy. And how about this last one? Husky girls, those who are a little on the heavy side, are likely to be more even-tempered and efficient than their underweight sisters. <laughs> well, I think that these tips might make us laugh today, but unfortunately, many of them were taken seriously at the time. But thankfully, that didn't stop women from stepping up to serve their fellow citizens. If you own a Cirrus today or if you are considering the purchase of a new or used aircraft, consider this. Avidyne, in conjunction with the country's leading Cirrus sales and maintenance facilities, has launched the G3R9 program that combines the purchase of a late model, low time Cirrus aircraft and the addition of the Avidyne Integra Release 9 avionics suite for much less than you may have thought, and certainly much less than purchasing a brand new aircraft. G3R9, combining the best airframe, best engine, and best avionics for the best value. Women may have been seen as second string, but the job that they did was anything but. A shining example of this are the brave women who pioneered the art of service during World War II. The women, Air Force service pilots, the WASPs, and their predecessor groups. These female pilots numbered in the thousands and flew over 60 million miles in the U.S., freeing up male pilots for combat service. I know that many of you all are familiar with um, FIFI or Fifinella, the, um, the symbol for the wasps. I wonder if, if anyone in the audience knows who designed that. That's right, Walt Disney. She was considered the kind-hearted sister to that cantankerous gremlin who caused problems in airplanes, and she was there to help the wasps out of tight situations. During a two-year period, these women delivered over 12,000 aircraft ferrying 50% of the combat aircraft within the U.S. from factories and ports to military training bases, even towing targets for live anti-aircraft artillery practice. They flew 78 different types of aircraft, even some that their male counterparts feared flying. These WASPs were the gold standard for professionalism. When the male ferry pilots began racking up significant accident rates, on the P-39 pursuit plane, giving it the nickname the Flying Coffin, Lieutenant General W.H. Tunner called in the WASPs. He noted that their male counterparts 
were not flying the airplane according to specifications, but that women pilots paid attention in class and they read the characteristics of the plane that they were to fly before they flew it. <laughs> Maybe this is still true today? <laughs> After the WASPs took delivery of these high-speed airplanes, the general reported a reduced accident rate and no more complaints from the men. Cirrus Design's Vision SJ50 single-engine personal jet offers exceptional fuel efficiency, flexible seating for up to seven, advanced avionics, and all the Cirrus safety features you expect, including the Cirrus airframe parachute system. With its V-tail design, the Cirrus Vision is technologically advanced yet engineered to be simple to fly, to allow owner pilots more lifestyle pursuits than any other personal aircraft. Learn more about the Vision SJ50 at CirrusDesign.com. Dora Struther, one of the organization's earliest members, exemplifies the WASP's commitment to professionalism. When the B-29, the largest long-range bomber ever built, was rushed through production to get it to the front lines, the plane developed a dangerous reputation after the death of Boeing's chief test pilot. So to prove the airplane safe, Colonel Paul Tibbetts called in the WASPs, and Dora Struther did just that. In a training flight, before she was even checked out on the airplane, Dora experienced a fire in the number three engine. Without waiting for instructions, Dora directed the flight engineer to feather the number three engine and pull the fire extinguisher. According to Colonel Tibbetts, Dora Struther did everything by the book, the gold standard of professionalism. For many of the WASPs, service to country provided a newfound sense of purpose. Cornelia Fort was one of the earliest WASPs, and she wrote, we are beginning to prove that women can be trusted to deliver airplanes safely and serve the country, which is our country too. I have yet to have a feeling which approaches in satisfaction that of having delivered an airplane for the United States Army. Service to their country was dangerous and thankless, and it claimed 38 of their lives, including Cornelia Forts. Sadly, because the women were not considered to be in military service, their bodies were sent home at their family's expense. Without traditional military honors, there was no U.S. flag adorning their coffins. Yes, the job was dangerous and thankless, but Cornelia Fort and the 37 others weren't looking for accolades or praise. They were just doing their jobs. These examples are certainly humbling and inspiring. Opportunities to serve towards something bigger than yourself still exist today. And thank you to the 10% of the audience who's serving active duty in the military. Our hats are off to you.